Hi, I'm Jed with Whitetail Hollow Farms, and today we're going to talk about how to DNA your emu chicks. The first thing you need to do is call Animal Genetics and get sample bags sent to you. You could probably make your own, but it's much easier with their sample bags. Here's the three different kinds that we have. They all kind of accomplish the same thing. Some of them have some numbers on them, some of them do not. Uh, the next thing we do is get our sheet printed out from the Animal Genetics website. It will have, it will ask you for all your farm information, your information, and at the bottom what we have folded under is our credit card information. So you'll get all that part filled out. We fill out multiples at a time, and each time we go to do a group of eggs like this, we will, uh, we will use up one sheet, one trip. Um, we're lucky Animal Genetics is local to us, so they're really easy for us to drop off. So here's how you pull your sample. Everybody's kind of afraid of this, but find a, a, a good spot inside that's got some veins. So if you see where I'm pointing down here, there's some veins. Um, they don't need goo, they need veins. So anything that you can see veins in will work. So then you take whatever device you want, a hemostat or I'm using some, I usually use fingers, honestly, and I tear a good chunk out. I'm gonna try to leave a little bit behind, so I'll just kind of tear it off. And I try to leave a good chunk behind so that if we need to run this again, we can pull a sample and run it again. Sometimes they come back inconclusive. Okay, so we got our chunk out of that one. And that's our uh, leg band 77. Okay, that's what we're working with here. Okay, so let's look and make sure we've got some veins here. So I see a fair amount of veins here and there and everywhere. So I think this sample will probably work for what we're doing and I usually just fold it up and stick it inside of our plastic baggie and then I pull this piece up and out to where I can write on it and I tell them that this is an emu and our bird ID is number 77, which is his leg band number or her leg band number. And I slide that back in to the envelope and seal it up. And you can also put your farm name or whatever you'd like there at the bottom. And then I record emu leg band number 77 and I put the bird name down as if there is a label number the label number so that's four three nine nine two eight and I put a check mark for DNA sexing that's really all we have to do when I get done I personally take all of my samples and I staple them to the top of this and I leave them on the counter at Animal Genetics. Uh, more than likely, you don't live close to Animal Genetics if you're watching this. So you will put it all in an envelope and mail it to the address on the Animal Genetics uh, website or what's on the bottom of the sheet that you download. There are instructions on that. And then, usually in about a week, you get back a sheet similar to this telling you that was leg band number 65 and it was a male so and the date uh, kind of a little birth certificate for it pretty neat um, sometimes the when people come to get their chicks they like to get these um, but you can also go look on the website they'll give you a, a, a login and you can go in and look on the website for um, what the sex is much quicker we generally find out in a day or two uh, 
yeah, there's a little snippet that we printed from the website. It just tells us what some of our birds were, males and females. And um, But you can go on the website and find out, usually in a day or two. In your case, however long it takes to mail it to them, however you send it to them, plus a day or two, and you'll find out. Occasionally, you will get an, an inconclusive and you have to send them another one. When you have one that's going on for days and days and days, if they've received it, if it's in there, and you're just not getting a result, you might call them and find out that it's inconclusive and you need to send them another sample. So that's pretty much it. We get an inconclusive probably about every, what would you say, 20, 30 birds maybe we get an inconclusive. And this year we've had almost none. I don't think I've had to take any back in, but I did kind of get this same lesson I'm giving you from the folks at Animal Genetics. And I'm now making sure that I get, instead of nasty goopy stuff, which is kind of what I thought before. I figured, oh, if something like that ought to have some DNA in it. Nope. What you need is the stuff like that with some blood on it. What they do is they swab out some blood and, um, and they do the tests on that. If all else fails, we might make another video on this. Um, you can clip a toenail just like you would a dog, make it bleed a little bit, put a dot on there, and they're always conclusive. That's where you put your dot of blood and send it in. Um, they call these blood cards. So that always works. You know, we just prefer to do it this way, a little less invasive. So I really appreciate you watching our video. I need you to like and subscribe and comment below and tell me who you use for your DNA sexing and how you like them. Thank you very much.